everybody, Michael Snyder here, Seattle Weather Guy. We got a lot of questions about weather stations and I just thought I'd give my views here so I can just point people to my video here that I'm gonna post on YouTube about what weather station I use and why. And first let's go over some of the reasons of why I don't use some of these other weather stations. Basically, some of these weather stations, to put it honestly, are just not well made. Um, you might find some exceptions sometimes in these uh, ones that range from, you know, 100 bucks to $329, for example, here. But for the most part, when I've used these, the quality is just not there. It's okay for kind of a gimmick or if, you know, you want to just see the temperature outside or if you just want to have basic information and have a nice looking display, just something on your deck, you know, if you just chill about the weather, you're not really serious about recording information, they're probably fine. Um, another problem I have with them is like, for example, you know, this Tempest weather station here, if you locate this to get a good wind reading on your roof, you're not gonna get good temperature information. You're gonna get the heat from the roof coming off and affecting that thermometer. Um, the haptic rain gauge on top, I don't know about that exactly. It sounds like a good idea, but again, you're, you're gonna compromise somewhere here. You're gonna have to have the anemometer at a low place to get a good temperature reading, or you're gonna have to have the anemometer on the roof for a good reading and your temperature is gonna be off. Um, so that's usually the case with a lot of these. You, you can't separate this. So you, you take a look at some of these and you're just kind of dealing with an anemometer that you can't separate from the unit. Some of them do have that, but again, the quality isn't great. And the data recording is not as good as some other stations. We'll go over that a little bit here. Uh, but if you look at some of these all-in-one weather stations, you'll notice this anemometer just kind of sits near the rain gauge. This is going to interfere with rain coming in when it's windswept into your rain gauge or water can splash off of this and on into the rain gauge. It's not going to be that accurate. And again, the thermometer is uh, located with the anemometer. So you're not going to get a reading that is good. If you put it on the roof or in the backyard, you're going to get low wind or you're going to get uh, inaccurate temperature readings. So that's really the reason why I don't use these all-in-one stations. Davis makes a really good all-in-one weather station, really, the Vantage View. But again, the anemometer sits too close to the rain gauge and you're not going to get high quality readings. So I say spend a little bit more money and get the Davis Vantage Pro 2. It is worth it. The station will last you for years, if not for a decade or two. Um, you can see the rain gauge here. It's got bird spikes on this one. Um, the solar panel powers the station. It's wireless. It just broadcasts its signal directly into your home, onto your display. And then you can have this uh, weather link that collects all your data for you, stores it on the website. You can go back and look at all this archived information. And as well as you can just sit in your home and watch um, your information on a web page. And I will show you that here right now. You can see you can see my humidity outside, total rain on the year. You can watch your wind speed change during the storm and the direction. I've got two anemometers up right now, and they're both displayed here. It's kind of nice. You can see my wind rose on the day. You can see the direction that it's been blowing off and on during the day. You can see your outside temperature. You get more information if you scroll over any of these things. It even tells you, uh, you know, the the waxing gibbous. It tells you the moon stage. So if you sunrise, sunset, all this stuff is right here. You can change these boxes as you see fit and make them bigger or smaller. And it's a really good system. And you can go into the data itself. And you can kind of, you know, scroll through all your data. You come over here and you just select what you want it to display. You can go back, you can make charts. It's really a good system. So I highly recommend the David Vantage Pro 2. And let's take a look at this. This anemometer on the side here, this can be taken off of this unit. So you can place this unit 4.5 feet above a grassy area, get a nice accurate temperature reading. Your rain gauge is not gonna get interfered with by high winds. You put the anemometer on a roof or you put it on a large pole and you're gonna get a better, better anemometer, better wind reading. It's just a better location and better setup. You will have to buy a separate unit to broadcast that anemometer signal to your weather station, uh, but it's well worth the cost. These stations are extremely robust. I've been using them for 25 years now. You know, I've compared other weather stations and they're just nowhere near as 
capable as the Davis. And here is the actual Weatherlink setup. This is kind of, is like a plug and play thing. It hooks to your Wi-Fi and it sends all this information directly to the, the, um, the Weatherlink site and it stores all this data for you. I've got data back to 2008 on this site. It's really amazing. I can access it anytime I want. I can chart it any way I want. It's really nice. So here I'll show you, actually let's do this first. Um, this is just some of the website information here. Here's the console display. Now you take a look at this console here too. This one is not as good as the Vantage View also, but the Vantage View console is compatible with the Davis Vantage Pro 2. This one is just fine. It'll do just fine, but I like to go with this Vantage View console here. It tells you like some key things. You're storm watching and your wind is blowing outside. You want to see what the last gust is instead of just clicking on the high and low button, you're only gonna see the high gust of the, the day. You heard a big gust, you wanna see what the last gust is, it shows you that stuff. So the Vantage View console is a little bit better than the main Vantage Pro 2 console. And going on into, there's this picture of it. But yeah, that's the main reason why. You can co-locate sensors, you can add, for example, air quality, uh, sensor to this. You can add soil temperature, leaf moisture. It's great for farmers. It, it's a really nice station. It, I mean, it, it's going to cost you, you know, 600 bucks, but it's better to pay twice the amount than it is to pay $329 on a cheaper made station that you're not going to get good information. And again, you know, you, you want to Act, you know, you look at your situation and see what you want to do. Is it just a gimmick? You just want to see what your temperature is outside or have a nice display and see a pressure reading, then maybe one of those cheaper stations will work for you. But if you are at all serious and you want to have good, accurate information, I suggest you get spend a little bit more money and get a Davis Vantage Pro 2. Um, some of the other accessories here, you can get the radiation shield on the station, you can get it with a fan that's solar paneled and it'll draw air through it during the day, give you an ultra accurate thermometer reading. Or you can do it without a fan, the reading will still be pretty good, not quite as accurate. Um, you can do a lot with this stuff. You, there's actually snow melters. You can put a heated device inside these and it'll actually melt the snow as it falls and give you uh, a liquid precipitation total when it's snowing. Um, there's an uh, there's an ultrasonic anemometer that you can do with this instead of this three cup anemometer here. The ultrasonic one looks like uh, I've had it for eight months now. It's doing really well. It lines up really closely to the three cup anemometer, right? and it looks like it's better at low wind speeds too. It's more accurate. It's more sensitive. Picks up those low wind speeds. And what else can I go over here? Um, I don't mean to sound like a Davis salesman here, but they truly are the best station if you you could go out and spend you know five ten thousand dollars and get a, a professional station but those are usually for specialty applications and i just recommend if you have a house to go ahead and get the davis um what else can we go for here some other things i like to do are you know the kestrel handheld stuff is good if you just want to know, know temperature and just maybe get a little bit of a wind reading. You know, I, I don't think these wind readings are going to be that accurate. These props are really small. You have to line it up just perfectly with the wind. You're going to be holding your arm up all day. You can get little things that they sit in on a tripod and it does it. But again, you're, you know, you're near the ground. The wind reading isn't going to be that great. But it's good if you're on the go and you just want to get some temperature and dew point readings and all that good stuff. Some of these are pretty advanced water temperature. And so you can see some of these stations here too. I, I, don't, I don't think you can take the anemometer off that. And that's just a, no, that's a deal breaker for me. If your anemometer is with your thermometer, immediate deal breaker. You're not gonna get accurate readings. I like these Kestrel drops here too. I use these for my research stuff. I put these in actually white PVC because I noticed that these ports get blocked with moisture it can screw up the readings a little bit so i put these in white pvc it works really well 
And I have a plan of putting these along the coastline, the Washington coast, when a big windstorm makes landfall and plot out the low pressure and kind of see how, what the interior of the storm looks like, maybe get it at a resolution detail that has never uh, been recorded before. But yeah, so that's what I go with. I go with the Davis Vantage Pro 2. And, you know, if you guys want to contact me further, you can even ask me about setups. I've set up numerous weather stations of these. I set them up in Snohomish, Friends House in Everett. I set up Crestview Air Park, Green River. I've done my own house. I've done other friends' homes. And if you guys really need some help on setting these stations up, go ahead and message me on Twitter. And that's where I'll link this video. Um, yeah, if you guys think of anything else, let me know. And if you like these videos, click like and subscribe. Thanks, everybody.